There's a place in the scriptures that tell us a little child shall lead them. And in that same spirit, our wonderful Wesleyan choir, enjoy the special piece of music that begins our service today. Never really noticed it before, but if you look close, it kind of looks like Chuck shrunk, doesn't it? <laughs> Friends, welcome. Welcome to our very special service here today, as we remember three years ago, around the same date. More information will be coming about that a little bit later in the service. But I want to bring your attention. Today is known throughout our United Methodist Church as Umcore Sunday. You'll see these special envelopes that have been provided for us. It's a special offering opportunity for us to give to the United Methodist Committee on Relief. So they have funds there always on hand whenever a disaster strikes. Well, very often uh, we respond to those individual disasters, but these funds make it available that they can reply and respond right away when those needs are, are out there. So I just wanna bring that to your attention. Also, Friendly's Restaurant, when we have that coming up on March the 29th, uh, we'll need one of these slips, I understand, uh, to give to the uh, server so that we get credit for this. And I understand uh, that we'll get part of the percentage of the profits on that day. And if we have, a, I think it was 100 a, a folks that come out and do that, that uh, we'll receive, I think it was, 10 or 15% or something of the profits from everybody that goes to eat there on that day. So I think that'd be terrific if we get that many to come out. We had a wonderful gathering last week for Soup Sunday. How many of you were able to come to that? A couple of handful. We had a uh, great meal, great turnout, and a great fellowship. Uh, so we'll have to think about that maybe in the fall of the year, doing that uh, once again. Uh, Spirit Night, Spirit Night, like I said, a friend Lee's is going to be on March the 29th. That'll be from 4 to 8 p.m. That's for meals, or ice creams, and, and so on. Paint Night, uh, Paint Night is going to be on April, uh, April the 14th at 7 p.m. More information, I understand, is going to be coming about that. And also our Cornerstone, if, if that doesn't give you enough things to paint, they're going to be doing a, a painting project over in room 105 on April the 15th, April the 15th. So they're looking for some folks to help with that. Our Lenten study will continue tomorrow at 7 p.m. over here in the parlor, and uh, along with the Disciples with Yarn, who will be meeting in the library area. Uh, new members orientation, for those that would like to look at perhaps becoming a member of our church here at Hiss, will be held next Sunday. Next Sunday, uh, we're going to have it, though, over in the parlor. 
send it over in the library, but we're going to have it over in the parlor because we have our TV monitor over there during this time as we're doing the Lenten study. And that will be at 1 o'clock in the afternoon next Sunday. Uh, candy is still needed. Candy and those plastic Easter eggs for upcoming Easter egg hunt, which will be at 2 p.m. on Palm Sunday, which is about two weeks or so away. Uh, ball game. Uh, if you're interested in going to the ball game here with your ch members of your church family, Oriole game on May the 27th, that'll be a 7 o'clock game, or the Iron Birds, which will be on August the 19th, all, also on a, a Saturday. Uh, the Iron Birds, you get to see fireworks, and with the Orioles, you'll get a bobblehead of one of the Oriole players. So it's a good treat for all of us to enjoy uh, a ball game and fellowship time together as well. Well, my friends, welcome. Welcome for our time of worship together. Uh, we have these wonderful cards also out in the Narthex area, inviting people to come and join us for Easter, for the Easter celebration. So if you have some friends uh, that you'd like to pass this on, or maybe a friend you'd like to mail this to in the community, we invite you to pick up a couple of those. And if you can, can use that as a part of ministry for our church, uh, the more the merrier. I know that there were folks that came to our Christmas Eve services because they received something very similar to this as well. Well, we enjoyed our, our young people as they came to sing, and now we have another special piece of music from our adult choir that came and shared with us last week as well. us pray. Lord, we thank you for this time that brings us together here during our journey in Lent, leading to the cross of Christ, but ultimately to the good news of resurrection and new life. 
Be with us now in our worship service this day that our eyes, ears, and hearts may be open to the good news of your love and grace that grows more and more in us so that we may share that same spirit with others. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought, number 128. Our affirmation of faith. Would you please join us with that? We believe in God the Father, Father infinite, infinite in wisdom, wisdom power, power, and, and love, love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. good. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love 
as set, set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, God, to the, the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Scripture reading is Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Yes, my friends, indeed we will. May the Lord be with you. Also with you. And let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving God, as cars have changed over the years, so has our own concept of who was our neighbor. That is in a geographical sense. As jets have changed this world of ours and shrunk it into a very small planet, and as space travel has put a greater part of the universe within our reach, so too a God who is omnipotent and omnipresent makes everything small and keeps us humble as we seek his majesty. For whatever happens anywhere in the world today, happens to and involves us as well, as residents of this planet. The earth and all who live in it are part of your kingdom. Yes, we can close our eyes to the plights of our neighbors, but those problems will not go away. We must bear one another's burdens. We must fight for all of our neighbors or we'll lose them all. And in this process, we will surely lose ourselves. Yes, Lord, we are our brothers and our sisters keepers. We must bear their burdens. We must share our bounty. We must share the good news that we worship a living, caring, loving God. O oh Lord, grant us such a spirit as that, as we share the good news with others. As we come here this day, we also lift up those that are going through trying times, those that are sick or ill, those that might even be facing surgery. As we lift up Betty and Lauren for Sharon, for Dr. James, for Kate, for Larry and his wife, for Tom, for Stan, for Lois, as we lift up Phyllis and Linda, for Clay and Justine. And Lord, there are some that are even on a longer journey than that, as we also remember John and Sue, for Mary and Don, 
for George, for Jewel, for Liz, for Michael, for Maddie, as we remember Tina and David, for George and Marie, for Pat, for Ron and Barb, for Dawn, and for Dan. Oh Lord, these and so many others that we're thinking about even now, hear us, O oh wondrous God, as we lift them to you from our lips and from our hearts. O oh Lord, in your love and mercy, hear these our prayers. And now, O oh loving God, be with us in our time of worship this day, that we might receive the good news of life that you have shared with us in Christ. For we lift up this prayer in his name as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, my friends, I invite you to rise with me and join in our hymn of preparation, Open My Eyes That I May See. gospel lesson from John chapter 9 verses 1 to 25. As he walked along he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. 
When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Shalom, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Shalom and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called his parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <laughs> seen the world a day in his life, whose sight was taken before he breathed the air of this earth, who many believed to be the very evidence of sin, you presented astonishing evidence of your divinity, first with intimate touch to his deepest wound, then with bold methods that no one could understand, and next specific commands to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. This man, who'd never seen hope a day in his life, he obeyed. Mud caked on his useless eyes, another mask to hope, but he trusted your word to him. Walking perilous paths to get to the pool you commanded him to go to, reaching in faith for the water he couldn't see. He washed, he was healed. He testified but was rejected by those blinder than he. Nevertheless, he worshiped you as the Messiah. 
the Son of Man. Amen. Reading from an article. When the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a pandemic in March of 2020, churches and faith-based organizations had to make major adjustments to the way they operated in order to keep staff, volunteers, and congregations safe. Depending on your city and state, government leaders either encouraged or mandated that businesses, schools, restaurants, churches, and other faith-based organizations physically close their doors in an effort to slow the spread of the disease and keep as many people as possible healthy. The challenge became, how do we continue to bring our message and services to people while having our physical doors closed to them? The answer quickly became online or virtual ministry. And organizations that originally did not provide an online option scrambled to make services and programs available through the internet. Even large churches and organizations with existing online options were called to expand their virtual offerings in lieu of in-person gatherings. And almost three years ago to this day, this is what our Sunday morning service here at His United Methodist Church three years ago looked like.
Good morning, friends. I'm Pastor Mark Mooney here at His United Methodist Church in Parkville, Maryland. And I'm Pastor Debbie Mooney, pastor of Leechtown United Methodist Church in Turnysville, West Virginia. As you can tell, as uh, Jim was playing that wonderful hymn earlier as we began our service together, church is a little bit different today. My, my friends, let us never forget that the church is a lot more than it a building structure. The church is you. The church is all of us. And we come together here with you this morning to celebrate, even in the midst of all that we have been going through, the good news of God's love and grace. And now, O oh Lord, use me as your instrument of that same message of love and of grace. Through Christ I pray, amen. And my friends, on that day, this was the message, the exact message that was shared for the service. I came across a list recently that really got my attention. It was titled, Great Truths About Life Little Children Have Learned. See if you can relate to any of these. No matter how hard you try, you can't baptize a cat. When your mom is mad at your dad, don't let her brush your hair. Never ask your three-year-old brother to hold an egg for you. You can't trust your dog to watch your food for you. Don't sneeze when somebody is cutting your hair. Never wear polka dotted underwear under white shorts, no matter how cute they are. Now I'm sure that those lessons were learned by children who either attempted or who had experienced those dynamic, eye-opening events themselves in their own lives. In fact, I can just picture in my own mind some of our own young people here at our church playing church while trying to baptize a cat. I'm sure that would be an experience that they would never forget. But my friends, the same thing could be said about all of life. In fact, in fact, a dramatic eye-opening experience can give us all new insights, new perspectives, and a new vision about life. And that's part of what we're learning here today in the scripture lesson that we just heard from John's Gospel. A man who had been born blind had a dramatic, eye-opening experience, literally, in his encounter with Jesus. And talk about new vision and new insight. He was completely and totally healed. 
For the first time, the very first time in his life, he could see. The people in his own hometown where he grew up, they couldn't believe it. Is this the blind beggar? Others thought to themselves, no, it can't be. Just somebody that kind of looks like him. But he replied, yes, I'm he. I'm the man. You know, my friends, in days such as these, we are reminded that tragedy, that tragedy can happen so quickly and at times so unexpectedly. In a blink of an eye, life can change in a moment. As a nation, we have been living with that awful reality since 9-11. And then there are those natural disasters we seem to hear about in the news all the time. Earthquakes, tornadoes, floods. And now today, today we're dealing with that terrible virus and the uncertain nature it has brought to every part of our everyday lives. Just look around you. And then in the very midst of these trying days, many have asked, why God? Why this? God, why did you allow this to happen to us? I hope and I pray that all of us here today know that God does not cause tragedy. But many of ourselves might be asking ourselves, why does God even allow such horrible things to happen in the first place? In a way, in a way, the disciples of Jesus asked that very same question over 2,000 years ago. They met a man. They met a man one day who had been blind since birth. And in that day and time, it was believed that all suffering and misfortune happened because of sin. So the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Well, Jesus did not answer with a neat, simplistic answer to the problems of suffering. But I do know this, that in our time of pain, heartache and suffering that God is with us. Throughout all of life in good times and in bad. The story is told about a group of kids who were saddened by the loss of their pet kitten. They had prayed and prayed to God that their, that their kitten would get well. But sadly, it didn't happen. So they went in search of the local pastor that they knew spent his mornings in the local coffee shop down the road. When they found him, he was sipping on his morning coffee, reading the newspaper. And they asked him, Pastor, Pastor, why did God let our cat die? So the pastor, he laid his paper to the side and launched into a long, complex theological response to their question. And after he had finished, he wished them well, sent them off, and went back to sipping his coffee and reading his morning newspaper. The children walked away somewhat bewildered as one of the young fellows looked at his sister and said, see, he doesn't know the answer either. As we noted earlier, how perceptive young children can be. 
And I guess that in many ways we can never fully grasp the mysteries of pain and suffering that we in our lives sometimes experience. But my friends, there's one thing we can do. We can be there for each other whenever such things occur. And so my message here this day is a simple one. And that is this. Be the church. As I said last week, it's not enough for us to just come to church. We must be the church. Be the people that God has called us to be. And so so during this time of this terrible pandemic, let's look out for one another. Either through phone calls, through emails, through texting, through letters, or whatever. Let those around you know that you care about them and that they are not really alone. Because God is also with them and with us. In such times such as these, remember your many blessings in life and those everyday things that we have seemed to have taken for granted. Family, our friends, our neighbors, and the many wonderful ways that God has blessed us in life. It's a wonderful poem that has been written, that talks about the state that many of us are in now. And this time, at that day, Debbie came and read it, but for now, this day, Linda will come to share those words. When this is over, May we never again take for granted a handshake with a stranger, full shelves in the store, conversations with neighbors, a crowded theater, Friday night out, the taste of communion, a routine checkup, the school rush each morning, coffee with a friend, the stadium roaring, each deep breath, a boring Tuesday, life itself. When this ends, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be, we were called to be, we hoped to be, and may we stay that way better for each other because of the worst. Let us never take for granted, my friends, the simple blessings of life. While the news headlines continues to remind us of the troubles of this world during this pandemic, let us remember, most of all, that God has not abandoned us, that God is with us and is ever present in our times of trouble. There are some words from Isaiah. I'm going to ask if they're put up on the screen. We didn't have an opportunity to do that then. But these words became our theme for the year. In fact, the SPRC committee gave me a stone with those words written upon them. And my friends, at this time, I want to invite you to join in with me as we read these words together from the 41st chapter of Isaiah. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, and I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. My friends, may that be so of us. The word of God for the people of God. And on that very day, this was the song of reflection that Jim played. I meet with you and my soul sings out as your word throws doubt far away. 
and the pews were empty. My friends, as I was sharing those words, I was looking at you. I was seeing you there. Now let us continue the service and the sharing of our morning gifts. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. My friends, may our hearts be filled with that kind of joy also on this day.
wonderful God, pour out your blessings upon these gifts. May they indeed reflect our love and our hearts for you and for the ministries of the church you call us to take part in. Through Christ we pray. Amen. And now, my friends, our closing hymn of dedication, Great is Thy Faithfulness. No matter what we might have to face in life, we are not alone. We have God and we have each other. And now go from here in peace. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you this day and evermore. Amen. Amen.